Hello Wolfpack, the US midterm elections are in about 24 hours from the time this video releases. That's going to bring some major volatility in the market most likely. We've seen on previous occasions in previous bear markets in 2018, for example, and also in 2014, that uh, the US midterm election actually led to a final drop in the bear market. Now, it's a little more complicated this time, and it's not as straightforward as people think, right? It doesn't necessarily need to happen that way this time, but there are some very critical levels we need to be watching on Bitcoin, and this is a very important video for that reason. Everyone needs to understand understand what these levels are and what breaks above and below these levels will mean for Bitcoin because it's very decisive, it's very straightforward. Let's get into it. This is what Bitcoin looks like, like right now, okay? We broke above a critical level. I'm going to make it pink so you guys can see it, 20.8K. That was a critical local resistance. It did not, it's not, you know, a, a level that confirms the bottom being in by any means. I'm going to tell you what level that is in a second. But we did break above that and we did activate a buying plan because of that. Now, this buying plan doesn't say the bottom is in. I don't believe the bottom is in yet, okay? That's very important. I don't. I actually don't believe the bottom is in yet. I still think the four-year cycle is relevant. I still technically do think we'll go down and form a lower bottom, uh, most likely just a retest of the bottom actually and probably a, maybe a little bit below but the point is the buying plan did trigger i had did buy bitcoin uh and you know and we can look at the buying plan now and the buying plan is, is is by no means again it's not a macro buying plan it doesn't mean the bottom's in it does mean that the short-term risk reward ratio for bitcoin was favorable at that breakout now what happens next is very interesting okay because we have a scenario here we bought 50 percent at 20.8k and if we drop below 20.8k and we close below 20.8k right a daily close below 20.8k which could very well happen uh, in fact, we're at that level right now. So let's see what happens there. We could either do one, one of two things, depending on your risk tolerance. You could sell and you could rebuy lower or you could just hold on to it, right? Because it's not a bad price to buy Bitcoin out anyway. And then if we break upwards even further, for example, we'll break above 200 day SMA, which we can go down and take a look at right now. The 200 day SMA is the green line here, currently sitting around 23.8K. If we break that, you'd buy the other 50%. Now, that's basically what's happened. That's basically what we've done. Now, what are the critical levels? Because that doesn't really tell us much. And, and where is Bitcoin likely to go next in the short term? Because obviously the short term has shifted quite a bit. Let's take a look. So I'm bringing up the bull market support band, that orange band there, which is comprised of a 20 week SMA and the 21 week EMA. And I'm looking at that band and we're seeing, if we go to the hourly chart, that that bottom of the band, the 20 week SMA, is actually sitting right on top of 20.8K, supporting that price level. 20.8K, make it pink so you guys can see it once more, is of course the critical level. If we drop below that, that would be a sell signal, right? That would be a short position. Uh, and, and more specifically, if we drop below 20.1K, that would be a loss of this entire local range since the end of October, which would send us down spiraling towards 19.6K, which is the 2017 all-time high. And from 19.6K, there really isn't much until we retest for lows, right? So we're actually on very thin ice for Bitcoin right now. And we've been on thin ice for a long period of time. It's just been very boring. Not much has happened. But with these two major events, uh, the US election and CPI coming up in the next, say, you know, 72 hours, we're going to see that volatility start to come in. We're going to see most likely a move start to happen. But all in all, I'd be I'd be lying to you if I said the short term looked good at the moment. What we saw is a bull flag formation, which is very bullish, and that's one of the reasons we bought. Uh, and then we actually dropped below the bull flag formation, which is less than a 30% chance of happening. And then on top of that, after the drop below the bull flag formation, we came up to it. We saw a resistance support flip, not only a resistance support flip, but also a, a, an evening star formation where you have a strong uh, red candle, a green candle, then a doji candle, and then a strong red candle. That is bearish, right? That's not only, that's not only bearish, it's actually ultra bearish and whether or not we hold this level now 20.8k is kind of up in the air we can't say we're not going to hold it we can't say we're going to hold it it's a major support so we could very well hold it and we've got the bull market support band supporting it as well but to act like we're super super bullish right now is just ridiculous it's, it's completely incorrect you know, throughout this entire move, we saw ascending volume uh, and it was a very strong move. And again, that's one of the reasons why we went through with the buying plan. The volume was ascending strongly. But just recently, as soon as we broke into it, as soon as we broke above that 20.8K level, the volume really fell off. It, it represents the fact that, or it signals the fact that buyers aren't particularly confident in this level yet. There maybe isn't enough data yet to support a, a price level this high. And it, it represents the fact that maybe buyers are waiting for CPI in the midterm. So you might ask the question then, you might say, Wolf, well, why are you holding this position? Why are you holding this buy position if, you, if you're not particularly bullish? And the reason being is because we have major events coming up and we're still above support. So the TA right now could very well easily be invalidated if those events turn out to be bullish for Bitcoin. And also it's very interesting to note, if we close a daily candle below 20.8K, you're risking like one to 2%. It's really not a big risk. So although I see the probability of this trade 
playing out well as lower than the probability of it, of it playing out badly, the risk is low enough for me to justify holding the trade. That's very important. So I still see this trade as valid. I still think Bitcoin, uh, if you've already bought, is relatively decent to buy. My other thing I wanted to say was this. Well, got a lot of people who aren't comfortable buying at this level, right? And that's fair enough. It's not a very comfortable level to buy at. But they say, okay, well, where would you buy if you didn't buy at this level? Uh, and I would say, again, above the 200-day SMA, but more specifically, more specifically, right? That's about 23.8K. More specifically than that, if we actually delete everything on this chart, right? Let's delete everything. And we look at Bitcoin, we zoom out, and we check out the volume profile, right? Where is the gap on the volume profile? Now, for those of you who don't know much about the volume profile, I see the volume profile basically as a variety of hills and mountains, okay? So if we zoom in, uh, hills and crevices, sorry. So if we zoom in, uh, and wait for it to load here, we can see that volume profile represents historical volume in a range. If we're below a big spike in the volume profile, it acts as resistance. If we're, if we're above a big spike in the volume profile, it acts as support. Right now, we have a massive gap on the volume profile between around 24K and around 28.6K. Meaning, if we break into that level, this level over here I'm circling, we will move very rapidly between the prices of 24K to 28.6K. Meaning that's a good place to buy. If we break 24K-ish, that would be a decent place to buy. And that would be a break above the local range itself. If we were to do that, if we were to break above this local range, break above the volume profile, I would be very convinced that the bottom would be in a Bitcoin. I don't think we would drop below if we saw that. For absolute confirmation, we need to break 28.6K because that is the next level on the volume profile. And that, of course, breaking above 28.6K doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at this chart and say, look at that major support, right? This is major resistance. If we break that, it'll be major support again. We'll probably go up from there. So 28.6K for ultimate confirmation. 24K would be a decent buying level if you haven't bought yet. Uh, and as of right now, I do want to really re reiterate that fact I said before. Bitcoin's at major resistance right now. It's also just above major support. But more specifically, it's showing signs of weakness here. Now, these events we're seeing in the next two days very well could give Bitcoin the, the much needed push it needs to move upwards. But I do understand the fact that we have still got the four-year cycle theory, and the four-year cycle theory does suggest we see a Q4 bottom. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens here. I will also note the fact that Ethereum is at strong resistance, and the total cryptocurrency market cap is at strong resistance. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they need to reject. What it actually tells us is that they're on the edge of a breakout, and we just need a little push, a little push from these events to push them above, and all of a sudden, bang, we're seeing 20, 30% gains all across the board. But on the other hand, if these events aren't bullish, they come in bearish, we're seeing a swing back down to the lows we saw in June. And that, that's basically a given. So this is a very important time for Bitcoin here. A very important time for the entire market, not just Bitcoin. And, and you know, that's reflected in the Ethereum and the total cryptocurrency market cap chart. I'm not just making this up. They're at major resistance as well. Look, total cryptocurrency market cap at major resistance stemming from February. Ethereum's at major resistance stemming from May. And Bitcoin is at major resistance, which is stemming all the way back to, to 2020. So pretty big time, guys. Now, as we head towards this major time in the market in the next 72 hours, the chart that really concerns me is this. This is an on-chain chart representing seller exhaustion in the market. We can see that in the periods of time here, as you can see, just read the post, in the periods of time uh, for, for the entirety of Bitcoin's life cycle, it's seen seven retests of this level of low volatility uh, plus high losses, which is seller exhaustion, right? And out of those seven times, six of them have led to a pump. So you could say, okay, this is bullish, but the problem with that is this. The one time it didn't, so out of the seven times, six times it led to a pump, the one time it didn't was 2018. And 2018, it led to a 50% correction. As you know, we are currently forming a very similar structure to one we saw in 2018. We're seeing horizontal consolidation. We saw a retest of the bull market support band. And we recently saw a rejection of the 50-week 50 50 uh, 50 SMA. Now, the question is, did we see this structure form up here at 26.8K, in which case, uh, 28.6K, in which case we would have re-seen the drop, in which case we need to head upwards, or are we seeing it right now, in which case we haven't seen the drop yet, in which case we need to head downwards for one more swing to the downside. This is what I mean. Bitcoin's uncertain right now. We don't know for sure, but it's certainly worrying, right? It's certainly worrying the fact that we're forming a very similar structure to 2018. And I think that honestly, even breaking above the bull market support band, which, which kind of stems from uh, 20.7K to 22.5K, even breaking that will give us a lot of cl clarification of what, what's actually happening here, because we didn't break that on, on uh, Bitcoin in 2018 until we actually saw the bottom. So look, I think personally, if I had to guess, I would say Bitcoin will be seeing absolute and complete clarity by the end of November.
I want to briefly interrupt this video to talk about the Bitget Exchange. Now, the Bitget Exchange has five times lower fees than Binance, which is commonly referred to as the cheapest exchange in the cryptocurrency market. It's also non-KYC or voluntarily KYC, so you can stay true to the fundamental values of cryptocurrency, one of which being anonymity, of course. It's also got a security fund in there, so if you lose your funds by fault of the exchange or by personal fault, uh, you can make a claim and actually retrieve your funds back. On top of all of this, if you sign up using my referral link, you can get access to exclusive discounts and rewards. This is the best exchange on the cryptocurrency market, and I use it personally, and so should everyone at the Wolves of Crypto YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in actually learning how to trade for yourself, you can check out the Crypto Academy via the website link in the description below. This is a course developed by myself and Megawell Crypto, a 10-unit course taking you through every single step from step one to step infinite about how to become a trader. Go ahead and check that out and chuck us an email at cryptoacademycourses at gmail.com and we'll get back to you with the full information and payment information if you're interested. Thanks guys for watching the advertisements. Let's get back into the video. I think we will know exactly what's gonna happen by the end of November. I think we will know if the bottom's in decisively or not by the end of November. The next 72 hours, these events that are gonna happen are gonna give Bitcoin the push it needs finally to decide whether it's gonna go lower or go upwards. That's my personal opinion. I very much do believe that. Uh, and I've always said this, I've always said, you, know, you can go back and watch my videos from September, from late August. I've always said November will be the biggest month for Bitcoin. It generally always is. November is the month on Bitcoin that we historically see lows. And it's also the month on Bitcoin that we historically see massive gains. And what happens after the lows? Right, when we see a low, you generally see massive gains off the low. Okay, so that's generally what happens. And that's why I think November is going to be huge. But there's, there's many reasons for that as well. Just looking at the four-year cycle itself, the four-year cycle theory... You know, and what I've what I've analyzed from it, we can bring it up right now and just take a quick look. You know, it's a it's a date range trend on Bitcoin. We know that. We've gone over this many, many times. But ultimately, the date range trend predicts a Q4 bottom, but more specifically, it actually predicts a bottom in November. That's the exact date it predicts a bottom, in November 7th, right? Right now, sorry, it, it's actually November 7th today, which is interesting. It predicts a bottom today. Now, the point is, the reason why I'm not, I'm not too concerned about the specific date is because it's not it's not a you know strong enough precise enough trend to nail it down to a specific day you can't really nail down a four-year trend a four-year sat in a four-year you know cycle over a thousand days to a specific day it's just not possible in fact over 1500 days so we've said okay what about three months three months sounds fair let's do three months q4 but specifically november is actually the month it's predicting the bottom to be in so i think that you know whether or not we see the low on bitcoin uh, as per the four-year cycle is a, is a question in itself but the point of the matter is this, we're going to be making a decision in November. I genuinely believe that. I genuinely believe Bitcoin will see, as I said before, if we go back to the daily chart on Binance, I genuinely believe Bitcoin will see a break above either 24K or a retest of 17.6K within this month of November. I do believe that. And that's probably going to be the title of this video. Uh, now, yeah, I strongly believe that. I've gone over that many, many times in the past. What I will like to say as well, briefly just on a separate note, is that inflation, the data for inflation is expected to come in at 8%. The last month's inflation data was 8.2% and the high on inflation was 9.1%. Uh, so we can very well expect inflation, the top to be in for inflation now, we're over 1% below uh, the peak for inflation year on year and it's been basically four or five months since we saw that. So I think the inflation top is in, just on a side note. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you know, when inflation descends, uh, markets generally start to trek upwards. And so, you know, this is what I mean. It's like four-year cycle saying lower, but the TA is kind of indecided and the macro is kind of saying, okay, maybe it's time for Bitcoin to start going up. Now, the macro for the S&P 500 says we're going down a lot more, uh, but Bitcoin is slightly different to the traditional markets. We've covered that a lot in the past. Bitcoin and traditional markets don't bottom and top at the same time. Uh, Bitcoin topped out in November. Traditional markets topped out in January. By the time they topped out, Bitcoin was down 40%. We could very well see the same thing happen uh, on the lows here. So, Big questions for Bitcoin, I suppose, just over, you know, wrapping up this video, I could say this, you know, 20.8K on the daily candle, very, very, very important level in the short term. We need to hold that. If we don't hold that, that's not good. If we don't hold that level, 20.8K in the short term uh, on the daily chart, that is basically saying not only are we rejecting from this breakout, not only is that a fake out, not only will we be going down further because of that, but also that would be a rejection from the bull market support band. And generally when you see rejections from the bull market support band, it doesn't end well. We saw a rejection from the bull market support band here in April and following that, in the in the weeks following that, we saw a drop all the way down from 40K to 17K. Okay, so it's not a good... 
It's really not a good thing. You don't want to be rejecting from the bull market support band. It's an incredibly interesting, it's incredibly important time. Uh, on the contrasting side, if we move upwards, you know, from here, that's very good because that means we're holding the bull market support band. That means we're holding the 20-week SMA, we're holding 20.8K. So we are very much on kind of thin ice, but also on the edge of a breakout. It's like at the same time, we're, we're on... What would you say? I suppose we're on a knife's edge for Bitcoin. You know, we can either fall this way or we can fall this way. We don't really know exactly what's going to happen. And the next 72 hours will give us that clarity. So I know the reoccurring theme for my videos in the last few months has been, we don't really know what's going to happen. I know it's frustrating, but that's what it is. Uh, you have to remember, guys, you know, this is very important to remember. We don't make money on Bitcoin long term as traders. You know, myself as a trader, I make money on short-term trades and altcoins. It doesn't matter what happens to Bitcoin. It's not relevant to me. I don't make predictions on Bitcoin for fun in my spare time. I do it for the channel and I do it for a general understanding of the market. It doesn't necessarily affect me too much whether Bitcoin goes up and down because I'm still going to make money from trading shorts and longs. So it's very important to note, you know, my, my whole job isn't predicting Bitcoin. My whole job isn't predicting Bitcoin long-term, short-term movements, medium-term. It really doesn't really matter to me too much. What I care about really is altcoins. I just do Bitcoin for the channel and for a general understanding of the market, which everyone needs to have, by the way. But when Bitcoin's unpredictable, it doesn't mean I just don't make money anymore. And I think everyone should get themselves in the same position like that. You shouldn't be relying on Bitcoin to make money in a cryptocurrency market. You should be learning how to trade. I genuinely believe that. And if you want to do that, you know, I've got a course, become a trader. So check it out. I mean, that's not a shill. I'm just saying. Uh, and you can obviously do it your own way online, YouTube videos, websites. It's very important you understand how to learn how to trade because Bitcoin long-term, guess what? It's hard to predict. It's very unpredictable. It's very unreliable. It relies on a lot of things like macro global events. In fact, I'd say Bitcoin macro is much harder predict to predict than any altcoin in any given moment in the short term, you know, by tenfold easily. So very interesting. Yeah. So anyway, guys, I'll end the video there. Big events coming up, 24 hours until US election. Let's see the results. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.